Welcome to a short introduction to the physiology of Ujjayi Pranayama, produced by Three Treasures Studio. Always consult your physician and a yoga professional before attempting any of the practices of Yogasana or Pranayama. Ujjayi breathing is a yogic type breathing associated with Pranayama and Yogasana, especially Vinyasa Yogasana. Ujjayi is an invigorating breath, the victorious breath, that is suitable for most asanas of Yogasana, although it is typically not used during relaxation asanas, like Savasana. It may be helpful to think of your breathing in two phases, inhalation and exhalation. In the traditional yogic context, inhalation is called brahmana, while exhalation is called langhana. Inhalation is performed by a narrowing of the glottis and a widening of the palate. It is a similar sensation to yawning, however ultimately the inhalation occurs through the nose. Exhalation occurs also with the restricted glottis. It is also ultimately an exhalation through the nose. To learn Ujjayi, stand or sit in a comfortable position with your back and neck straight and relaxed. Inhale through your nose into your belly relaxing the abdominal muscles as the viscera expand the belly. Complete the inhale by filling the chest, allowing the shoulders to relax as the chest expands outward at the sides and slightly upward at the sternum. Exhalation is of the same length as inhalation, and like inhalation, is coordinated with the movements of the body through the asana sequence. Exhalation is not forced and relies primarily on the elasticity of the lung tissue, respiratory muscles, and the viscera and the abdominal muscles. Both inhalation and exhalation are through the nose with the relaxed, soft palate. Inhaling through the nose filters, humidifies, and warms the air as it enters the lungs. Exhaling through the nose allows us to reabsorb the heat and humidity from the air we are exhaling, saving us energy. Inhaling and exhaling through the nose allows us our best chances at controlling the rate and depth of our ventilation. During both phases of ventilation, the glottis is slightly constricted, which creates sounds as air passes through the glottis. These sounds are soft, and only loud enough to remind us of our breathing. Perhaps the most important part of Ujjayi is the transitions between inhalation and exhalation. Do not hurry to complete either phase of breathing, and transition between inhalation and exhalation as smoothly as possible. It is during the gaps between the breaths that the real work of tuning the nervous system occurs. Nasal laterality describes breathing alternately from one nostril to another. It serves to further challenge coordination between our breathing and our higher brain. It also stimulates each hemisphere of the brain independently, as well as alternating stimulus of the sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous systems. The constriction of the glottis is provided by the middle pharyngeal constrictor muscles of the throat, which are innervated by the pharyngeal branch of the vagus nerve. Incidentally, the soft palate is also innervated by motor nerves from the pharyngeal branches of the vagus nerve. The vagus nerve exits the upper part of the medulla and serves a variety of parasympathetic autonomic functions. The vagus nerve, or wandering nerve, ultimately innervates the heart, lungs, esophagus, stomach, liver, pancreas, and kidneys. Influence of the vagus nerve is largely parasympathetic, as its stimulation tends to lower heart rate, control peristalsis, and perspiration. It also serves the laryngeal muscles of the mouth during speech and respiration, while also conveying information about body temperature, digestion, and current emotional state. The glottis is defined as the vocal folds, or vocal cords, that create the sounds for speech and singing. 
In terms of inhalation, the glottis is the first gateway for air that enters the larynx and ultimately the bronchial passages that lead to the lungs. The larynx lies below the glottis and has muscles that narrow the air passage just below the glottis and is critical for creating sound and controlling air flow through the glottis. These muscles are also innervated by branches of the vagus nerve. During exhalation, the glottis is one of the last gateways for air as it leaves the body. This means the glottis, and the muscles that control it, play a critical role in our efforts to control our respiration during yogasana, as we can use it to control the amount of air that enters and leaves the body. Yoga tradition divides our breathing into the phases of inhalation and exhalation. Advanced pranayama includes an understanding of the gaps that occur during the transitions between inhalation and exhalation. Ventilation describes the movement of air in and out of the lungs. Respiration also includes the transport of gases from air to the blood, to the cells, and back to the blood and in the air. Inhalation brings air and, more importantly, fresh oxygen into the body, which it will use in the process to create energy. While at rest, inhalation will be quiet and relaxed, and the creation of energy will be aerobic, meaning the body is using oxygen that is readily available in the blood that is provided by our breathing and the hemoglobin that carries it. During yogasana, the energy levels increase, and so does our need for oxygen. If our energy needs increase beyond our current supply of oxygen, the body switches to another process for creating energy that is called anaerobic. Anaerobic production of energy occurs when our breathing cannot supply enough oxygen for the needed energy requirements, as can occur during extreme exertion, fatigue, and stress. Aerobic respiration is efficient as more available energy is created with each metabolic reaction. Aerobic respiration is ideal for rest and for medium to long term exercise. Staying within your exercise threshold means maintaining aerobic respiration. Anaerobic respiration is less efficient as less energy is available from each metabolic reaction. It also produces lactic acid as a byproduct which leads to muscle soreness. Anaerobic respiration occurs when we exceed our exercise threshold or cannot supply the amount of oxygen for the needed energy. Anaerobic respiration occurs during short-term extreme exertion and fatigue. The constriction of the glottis during ujjayi breathing closely regulates the amount of air that is inhaled. By regulating the amount of air and oxygen coming into the body through controlled inhalation, we can influence the metabolic processes of energy conversion for every cell in the body. Inhalation is active and includes the contraction of the respiratory muscles via motor neurons that send signals from the higher and lower brain telling the muscles to contract. Inhalation is driven by the sympathetic nervous system. The constriction of the glottis along with the rhythmic movement of the diaphragm and nostril breathing all work together to keep the respiratory rate constant and thereby keep the supply of oxygen constant. While our normal reaction to exercise may be to allow the body to breathe as heavily as it needs to in order to supply oxygen, the practice of ujjayi breathing during yoga asana forces the body to work within the oxygen levels that we determine in the premotor and motor cortex of the higher brain. The type of physiological challenge that yoga asana provides requires a steady even supply of energy and a steady and even supply of oxygen a level that can bring us to but not exceed our exercise threshold. One of the most important aspects of ujjayi breathing is that it is relaxed. If it is not relaxed, we may be exceeding our exercise threshold and entering into anaerobic respiration, especially in the skeletal muscles. If we are inhaling too heavily, it is best to relax and lessen your effort as opposed to increasing your breathing. Your exercise threshold will improve over time. It is more important to the overall success of yoga asana that you keep the breathing relaxed and remain in aerobic respiration and within your exercise threshold than it is to actually work so hard that you exceed your exercise threshold and enter into anaerobic respiration. Breathing is one of the few vital functions that is available to voluntary control. 
and our control of respiration allows access to heart rate and other vital functions that would not otherwise be accessible. While breathing unconsciously, our breathing responds to a number of factors, including sensory information about posture, body temperature, CO2 levels in the blood, and our emotional state. Our respiratory rate responds to maintain homeostasis. While breathing consciously or voluntarily, the metabolic processes of respiration, temperature, cardiac output, and our emotional state all respond to our breathing and to the impulses created in the premotor and motor cortex of the higher brain. The normal response to deep rhythmic breathing is a sense of calm and being relaxed. This is why yoga tradition emphasizes being relaxed during not only ujjayi breathing but all of pranayama in that if we are feeling uncomfortable then we are probably not breathing consciously or are not keeping our level of exercise within our exercise threshold. Exhalation is passive. Normal exhalation does not require the contraction of respiratory muscles to occur, but rather occurs due to the elasticity of the respiratory muscles, the abdominal organs, and the lung tissue. Forced expiration, as can occur during heavy breathing, can require the contraction of the abdominal and interior costal muscles. Exhalation exchanges air in the lungs that has already been used for fresh air. It removes the old air that is oxygen depleted to make room for new air that is oxygen rich. Exhalation also removes CO2, a byproduct of metabolism. While breathing autonomically, control of inhalation and exhalation occurs in the medulla. The respiratory centers are sensitive to CO2 levels in the blood and the cerebral spinal fluid and can moderate the rate and depth of our breathing at nearly a second by second basis. The medulla senses the stretch of the lungs during inhalation and the contraction of the respiratory muscles in order to know when to stop inhaling and begin exhaling. Western scientists believe that the turn from inhalation to exhalation occurs in the pontine respiratory group. Conscious control of exhalation as it occurs during the ujjayi practice controls the amount of air that is exhaled which balances with the controlled amount of air that is inhaled. While the autonomic systems are still monitoring the body in its current status, the contraction of the muscles and therefore the rate and depth of our breathing originates in the premotor and motor cortex. These respiratory centers will allow conscious control of breathing up to a point. If, for instance, we exceed our exercise threshold, these centers will want to take control of our breathing and we may no longer be breathing in a relaxed, conscious way. Exhalation is strongly associated with the parasympathetic nervous system. 